so is my screen visible yeah available okay uh, sir we'll start the uh, talk today uh, as i see uh, in the last uh, few economic forecasts the only function of economic forecasts is to make the astrology look respectable because we have seen india's gdp growth forecast it has been proven wrong but if you really see uh, with constant revisions and re-revisions there is no point bothering about uh, macro numbers what matters in my view is the momentum and whether the growth is getting better so if there is momentum and growth is there then you move accordingly don't bother about macro numbers we have seen even with uh, china us some day the us is getting into recessions next day they are not getting into recession one day the job data is good the second day the job data is not good so it is just confusing the people so my view we are let's hold off a capex cycle and lower inflation with boost consumption and stock market or stock which are related to this kindly uh, get off your volumes please okay uh, the market setup as i see it uh, there is renewed optimi optimism that a recession in the us and europe will be mild now the other view was that once the china opens the, there was going to be a huge growth there because there is going to be pent up demand and all that but the recovery is is weak lackluster and it has changed the basic thought process of lot of people and that is why a lot of money is now flowing from china into emerging markets and it is also causing a decline in demand for commodities where the prices are declining in india if you see even in the data which has come up manufacturing has been around 4 4.5% growth but services have been the one which have been driving the growth of economy airlines hotels etc have been doing very well and the results are really good we saw lamentary hotel which doubled its revenue year on year there are substantial amount of capex plan in the steel sector i i will just say a few things about the steel sector steel demand in india is likely to go around grow around 7 to 9% in the next year there is a pick up in exports now and all the top 5 steel players are going to invest around 50 to 60000 crore per year as capex so because there is there is a huge demand from infrastructure sector there is a demand from uh, automobile sector so the things look good for steel but then this china factor has come in so you have to play it accordingly uh we we have seen this month the two wheeler sales have also now started looking up good sales uh and even car sales are looking good uh, maruti mahindra bajaj auto tvs uh uh then aisha they're all doing well the basic issue is premium segment of consumption is doing really well as we have seen with titan and other results and also radico khatan's results now i'll just say a few things about radico radico khatan their premium segment has grown by around 20% in this financial year and prestige and above uh, above brands have shown strong uh, sales and they have around seven brands which have joined the the millioner club millioner club is if you are selling 10 lakh uh, is yes, your sales per year so it is good now right but in my view the the valuations are expensive the margins are going down so you have to uh, take it both ways but the consumption of liquor is also showing uh, good traction the other big driver is going to be the renewable energy now here if you see green hydrogen solar wind power electric vehicles related investments are going to be doing very well now here i find ntc ntpc to be very interesting because they are doing lot of investment in clean power and they want to be uh, make it around 45% of their total production of power by 2030 2032 that is next 10 years and valuation wise if you see it is trading one time book value with a dividend yield of around 
say it's around 174 or 175 right now and uh, it is likely to give uh, good results there is a good uh, demand for power only problem is that it's a psu so uh, those that basic deficiencies of psus are there okay now i'll cover this uh, issue about how to predict growth uh, the reason is uh, the growth is in future therefore it is unpredictable hence there are few ways to predict uh, growth one is historical growth that is of earnings you see take 3 5 10 odd years earnings and extrapolate it ahead so this is a good start point to estimate growth growth can be in revenue operating profits margins net profit etc and it can vary sometimes the revenues are uh, going up but the margins are not going up and the net profits are not going up or sometimes the revenues are not going up and profits are going up because margins are going up so you'll have to see which which growth parameter you have to see various time periods can show varying growth so you have to see which period are you looking at now there is another estimate of the growth which are given by analysts it can be either management or analyst who are tracking the stock uh, firstly about management no management is going to say that they are not going to grow so you have to uh, take it with a pinch of salt analyst in my view don't look beyond short term maybe one year two years maximum hence the point about estimation is we have to see as to see how much a company is going to grow by estimating it ourselves now this you can estimate by seeing how much is the firm reinvesting in or investing in new projects how much of capex they are doing and what returns these projects are going to make also the extrapolation or understanding the growth rates becomes meaningless when the growth moves from losses to profits also as we have seen with number of companies as the company grows or the firm grows high growth becomes unsustainable we have seen uh, with case of hdfc bank they used to come up every quarter with 30% growth rate and it has now come down to around 20% because it becomes unsustainable same thing we are seeing with bajaj finance the sales of their aum cannot keep growing at the same 40 50% growth rate which they were doing earlier now to grow a firm has to reinvest its profits and reinvest them well otherwise if they are giving everything as uh, dividends or there is a lot of cash on their books uh, that means they are not investing their profits so how will they grow Go growth can also come by adding asset base or by efficiency by adding asset base means by acquisition or by improving your margins becoming more efficient reducing your costs and, and such ways we saw all these thing happening with all the it companies during covid times where their margins went up because they had cut down travel and other expenses now let's see how to predict growth uh, growth in earnings can be from new investment how much to invest in a business for long term growth either you can see equity earnings part where a portion of net income is invested into the business that is less the dividend how much is how much of your profits you are putting it back into the business or operational earnings where portion of after tax operating income is invested into the business so how well the how well the money is reinvested or invested is dependent on roe if you are considering the equity earnings and operations operational earnings then return on invested capital roic now let's take an example i have tried to calculate the growth rate now these are for the companies which are not taking debt now there are different ways to uh, calculate the estimate the growth rate for companies which are taking debt and which are not taking debt now here what i have done is simple formula retention ratio that is 1 minus dividends upon net income into roe so this is the uh, what i have done that is retention ratio into roe so if like for infosys they have given 58% dividend so i have subtracted that from the uh, profit and multi multiplied it by return on equity 
and in my estimate the infosys is likely to grow around 13% in the next year similarly i have done it for kpit as they have given lesser dividends but their uh, uh, so they are putting in more money into their business hence their growth rates are higher that is approximately 21% now let's see for the firms which are taking uh, debt to also uh, do investment the this is a famous quote by mr warren buffett he says that the best business to own is the one that over an extended period can employ large amounts of incremental capital at a very high rates of return so let's talk about efficiency firstly it will be part of uh, to estimate a growth rate we'll have to see how much is the efficiency improving so what i have done is return on invested capital for a time period t plus 1 minus return on invested capital for a time period t divided by return on invested capital for the same time period so like i have taken it for larsen and tubro lnt so next future is 13 last last year was 11 so the efficiency growth on the already existing investment is around 18.2% now reinvestment rate is calculated by this formula that is net capex plus change in working capital divided by ebit into 1 minus tax rate that is how much of the ebit is available post tax so the growth rate for lasen and tubro has worked out from this formula that is reinvestment rate into roc t plus 1 of uh, t plus 1 year plus efficiency growth i for the reinvestment rate net capex and change in work it, working capital i have found from the cash flow statement and the ebit part i found from their income and expenditure uh, state so the reinvestment rate is approximately 15% roc return on invested capital as we have seen earlier was 13% and efficiency growth we have calculated 18.2 so combining that my estimate is lasen will grow at 24.7% for the next year growth from new investment is sustainable whereas return returns from improvement in efficiency are for short term because circumstances change cost of input material goes up uh, the companies are not able to sustain uh, efficiencies because their cost goes up and all that. so it is always better if the company is reinvesting its profits or creating assets or buying new companies best investments are companies that can reinvest at high rates of return that is return on invested capital now we will see uh, in the as to what i was talking about as to how to avoid making losses while option selling so i'll cover two option greeks today one is delta and second is gamma now if you see here delta is the change in option price per unit change in underlying price so if the underlying say for example taking infosys is at 1300 so and the option price is say 50 so uh, how much the price of underlying changes and how much impact it has on the price of the option because sometimes we see that the stock price is going up but the option price is not moving and sometimes we see that the stock price is not moving that much but the option price has changed tremendously so it depends on delta now also delta is a measure of probability that the option would expire in the month simple so if you see delta of a call call option at the money is 0.5 so if you see here the delta is 0.5 and it it moves from for a call option from 0 to 1 so it moves around like this so at at the money why is it 0.5 means that there is a 50% chance that it can go it can go in the money or in out of the money but as you move ahead the probability of going going increases in the in the money so at far out of the money far in the money options always have highest probability and far out of the money have least probability of expiring in the money delta has the steep, steepest slope the slope is the steepest around at the money and it is changes 
fastest around this point and slows down as the option move further into the money or out of the money territory now delta of put option is always negative so it moves from 0 to minus 1 and at the money it is point minus 0.05 so as the underlying falls the put option turns more and more in the money and the delta moves progressively towards minus 1 we will see how we will utilize this data subsequently so this is about a delta part okay now let's talk about gamma gamma basically measures the rate of change of delta for a unit change in underlying price so if you see delta was the change in option price per unit change in under underlying price what gamma is measuring is the rate of change of delta for a unit change in underlying price so how much delta is changing is measured by gamma gamma as also we see is highest for at the money option here we have seen at 18500 uh call a uh, strike price gamma is 0.0008 and decreases as we go deeper into in the money in the money or out of the money same is applicable for calls and same is applicable for puts now let's take an example of impact of gamma on option price so this is uh, the data for call option chain which i have taken expiring which expired uh, last uh, the last peak okay now here if you see if the spot price is 18500 so the delta for add the money option is 0.5 we have already discussed and gamma is 0.008 so from 18500 if the nifty rallies by around 500 points so delta will change by 500 into 0.008 that is it will become 0.4 that means from 0.5 delta would become 0.9 now as the nifty rallies by 500 points the option will turn from add the money to deep in the money because this was the spot price and the option price has changed and its price would now move almost in tandem with the underlying that means if the uh, because the delta is 0.9 so if case the in case the uh, the spot price moves by 100 points the the price of the uh, option or the premium will also move around approximately 90 by 90 now similarly let's take a example of a deep out of the money call option with a strike at 19500 i have taken this example the gamma as per this data is at 0.002 and delta is at 0.036 now if you see if you have a 500 point move now because earlier we were taking a strike at 18500 here we are taking a strike at 19500 so if you have a 500 move uh, point move now the change in delta would be 500 into 0.002 that is 0.1 so from 0.036 delta will become 0.136 so after this move option is still still deep out of the money and if the underlying price moves by 100 points the option price will move by around less than 14 points only so as we see here gamma though is seeming to be a small number 0.008 and 0.002 but it has a significant impact on how sensitive the option price is to the underlying now so how does it influence our option strategy for deep out of the money options the so gamma is low and delta is also low we have seen that hence change in delta is low or delta is likely to continue to remain low for out of the money option hence even if uh, there is a small change in the price of the spot the the option price will not change much 
so delta once delta is low as delta is basically the probability of option expiring in the money the probability of deep out of the money option expiring in the money is low and due to their low gamma it is likely to remain low only so you will not make loss hence deep out of the money options are likely to expire worthless that is zero and make good candidates for shorting and yields profit to the seller it's so simple because if you it's a deep out of the money option it is because of low gamma and low delta it is not, not likely to move in the money but the premium receivable is going to be lower as brought out earlier also therefore shorting out of the money options essentially involves a trade off between probability of profit and quantum of loss because the premium for at the money or in the money options is higher now let's see a take example of in the money option their delta is very high and they have low gamma again i'll repeat in the money option as we have seen delta is very high and gamma is low which ensures that their delta does not change as much so delta for in the money option is likely to remain high hence the likelihood of them expiring worthless is very low extending the logic to at the money option they have highest gamma and delta of 0.5 therefore they should not be shorted with the expectation of them expiring worthless so the in the nutshell if you are a, if you are selling options better to go for deep out of the money options because they are safe and you are not likely to make losses so your profit will be small if you are selling in the money options oblique at the money options the chances of them expiring at zero or worthless is very low so uh, then that your chances of making profits also reduce so i have finished any questions please